let's look at the F curve editor. So I have a cube here. I'm going to put it at the scene origin by adding a zero key. And my key appeared here, and I can see it here as well. And a bit further, I'll add another key. So I can hold M and middle mouse button to add the key. Or I can say Alt-I to insert the key. Let's say I want it to go to uh, the right of the screen here. So on the X axis, you can take the key and move it up. Uh, if you want to just move it without taking the risk of changing the, the timing, you can select uh, just on the value axis here. And vice versa, if you want to change the, the timing without changing the actual value, you can do it here on the horizontal line, which is the, the frame. And when you have two keys selected or more, more keys, you can actually scale up the whole transformation or the whole uh, timing like this. It's the same as here on the side. And you can also enter directly a value here. So here it's actually uh, way too low. So I want a lot bigger. You can press F to reframe. And let's say I want it to go at uh, frame 45. You can also enter it here. And you can also change that uh, here as well. So on the frame, you can say actually meant 30 or 60. And uh, you can change the value. So you can select two keys and or, or a lot of keys if you want to zero them out all at once. For example, you can select them all and enter zero now they are all reset. You can also reverse an entire transform. So if you want, uh, if I wanted to go to the left of the screen instead of the right. So let's say you have a, a start animation going to the, the left, but you actually wanted to, to go to the right and you want to re, uh, reverse the root bone. You can here uh, select your higher value and just enter minus. It's going to scale all your keys down. And if you're negative, you want to go up. Uh, the behavior is a bit different. Uh, if I take the lower value and I change it, it actually moves all the keys up. So sometimes it's useful if you want to offset it. And now that it went all the way up, I can actually take my 900 value and put it down back at zero. So I reverse the keys again. So let's say I want to move uh, all the values up. I can also take the bottom value and put it at 450. And if you want to move keys in between frames, so if you go to play on frames, your slider is not snapped anymore and neither are your keys on your graph editor or on your timeline. You can see that when you have at least two keys close to each other, the timeline makes them a bit smaller. Again, still a middle mouse button to directly jump to a certain frame, like you would on the timeline. So uh, my zero key was uh, flat by default, and my other key isn't flat, so I can make them all auto to have an ease in, ease out. Or I can make them all uh, linear as well. And when you have several curves represented, and you want to shift select keys on a single curve, you can hold Control shift and click and you're gonna select, see I selected my three keys without having to like struggle to select those keys uh, and avoid the other curve. And if you want weighted uh, tangents, you can activate it here. You can do it on multiple keys at the same time. If I have a key in the middle, I set all those keys and I mess with the weight. You can see that it extends on both sides. Uh, you can break that relation here on this little link icon. So now uh, only interact either with the left or the right independently. And once you made a tangent uh, weighted, you can actually directly grab the handle on the curve. You can break the tangents with this icon. Uh, reset it. So if you bake all your keys, I have a safe uh, 
curve with keys everywhere so I can't uh, mess with the tangents anymore or if you have mocap it will probably look like this you can still uh, like scale all the keys like this when you retime your keys uh, with the, the side slider like this uh, it will like put some keys in between uh, frames so now because I have lots of keys in between frames, it's telling me uh, too many keys for edit on the timeline. So if I want to get that like a key back on every frame, I want to plot selected. Now it's re-added a key on every frame without changing the actual animation. And you can also use the fall off radius. So let's say I want to like slide down slide this down but I still want like the rest of the curve to try and react to this so I can increase that fall off maybe 15 frames now when I'm gonna drag down 15 frames are gonna react to this but that also works if I just select a single key let me make that even bigger and I move it down so it's pretty better to do it here on the side and just change the value and not the timing You can see that my, my curve now is a bit uh, broken. Uh, you can smooth it out again with filters. So if I take that portion here, I want to come in and use Butterworth. Uh, and we can preview. Uh, so Butterworth is really nice to remove noise on mockup data. Like when you have a little bit of jitter, that's uh, barely uh, perceptible. Or if you've been uh, blocking out your animation and uh, you realize you went too far in your in-betweens, they are a bit too erratic and you want to just make it a bit smoother. Uh, so you have this value of 7. If you reduce that value, the filter is going to be uh, more powerful because you reduce the, the frequency. So uh, maybe if I make it at 4 and I say preview, you can see that my curve is slightly softer now and I can say accept to validate. Let's do another example here on that angle. I want to smooth it out. You can put like a five preview and now it's up a bit softer. Similar to Butterworth, you have the smooth. Uh, the smooth is a lot more powerful. It's, it's a lot stronger, so be, be careful with it. If you apply that on mocap, you might really kind of break the subtlety uh, of, or, or the performance of the mocap. So, um, it's more if you have really a lot of noise or like broken data or you want to uh, really uh, smooth out your, your, your keys but be careful with it and this is the other way around uh, you have this default value of 4 and uh, to make the smooth stronger you want to increase that value so you can go at 12 and now when I smooth you can see that my curve really has a different profile if I cancel you can see there's a strong difference <clears throat> And uh, when you have a lot of keys and you want to go back to uh, more of a hand key workflow, you want to reduce the number of keys, you can use key reducing. Right, so you have uh, keys that try to follow your profile but with limited uh, number and they have tangents so you can actually um, take them all and set them back to auto if you want. And if you increase that number there are going to be less keys, so it's going to be even more simplified. And if you, in your mockup data you have some frame jumps like this, some peaks, you can use peak removal. You have the retime tool here, so you can easily um, double click and add the slider it's the same as in Maya then when you slide like this you retime the, the curves and you can do that on multiple axes at the same time 